we can. So with that, brother, why don't you come on in and give us your thoughts and opinions, and then we'll get into the nitty-gritty of it. Well, first, I really appreciate you calling me a master like that. Well, you are, brother. Well, I'm usually called a master at other things, but... You know, you talk about it's a, a master. It's a family show, Mark. <laughs> master of improvisation. That's got to be Jackie Chan because you think about oh, it. Oh, yeah. Wherever he is, he creates weapons out of everything that's just within reach. Everything. And I went into planning this conversation because of that, because he just looks at his surroundings and in a moment's notice, he has the right mindset to grab the right tool for the job, whether it's keeping distance, buying himself time to react better, or if he's just going to grab a sharp, pointy object and gouge it gouge an eye out or a curtain i mean a curtain. a curtain he can make a defensive tool an attack weapon out of a curtain yes unbelievable t-shirts anything like that anything. okay you got you got some notes there so why, just go ahead and we'll open up this for debate here ladies and gentlemen the number is 254-697-6633 if you've got some comments questions concerns all complaints go to trey and he'll file them accordingly <laughs> so go ahead <laughs> well first I want to say thank you to our law enforcement and EMS people for actually getting with the schools and coordinating some kind of standard operating procedures some rehearsals they grabbed the faculty over the last week all over Texas actually and they grabbed the faculty and they went through special training on active shooter uh, emergency medical procedures in case they, uh, they have students in their class that have been injured mm -hmm. so if you have some key individuals that want to take the fight to the attacker. You may still have some teachers or faculty or other students that want to just be on a support team and take care of the wounded people and get them out of the way, or at least do crowd control to get them out uh, to a safe area, a casualty collection point, things of that nature. But our law enforcement, they're being proactive instead of reactive. And by God, that's what we need. We need people to be proactive. proactive. I want to make a comment here. Um, I want to say it before I forget to say it. That is, they promote run, hide, or fight. I've only got one challenge with it. It's very minute. However, it's aggressive. If you have the ability to run away from a situation, by all means, do it without hesitation, doubt, or whatever. Run. Get out of dodge. If you can't run, but you can conceal yourself, preferably conceal and cover yourself, by all means, do that. Hopefully the pass, the, the threat will pass. But if you have to fight, this is where we get wishy-washy. No, we're not just going to fight. We're going to fight with extreme prejudice to take over and win the fight. That's the only difference I have, and I think that they hesitate from saying it because they're going 98% of the way. I want to go 100% of the way because that 2% is what gets you killed. You know, one of one of my most motivational things that, that pumps me up is Christopher Walken's lion speech. And I want everybody to look it up. But one of the last phrases that he says is, it's too late to be scared. It's time to kill. And th th that's <laughs> got to be it. You know, if, if everything else fails, you're not going to lay down like a sheep. Mm -hmm. You're actually going to stand up like a wolf and rip the guy's throat out. Now, between you and me... There is a time to kill. Keyword kill. Absolutely. But because we live in a politically correct society, I'm going to say that word kill is to stop. It is a perfect yes. time to stop the threat. You read between the letters and figure out what that word stop means, okay? But to be politically correct, you're going to stop the threat, okay? Yes. Okay. That, that, that's very good. Thank you for reminding me. Oh, no, I'm reminding myself. Because when I'm in the Middle East <laughs> and when I'm in Africa, I eliminate the threat. That's it. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Let's go. you got a list of things here. Let's, oh, yeah. let's go through it because I've got some things that we're going to talk about, spontaneity and weapons of opportunity. Well, and another thing in, in my line of work, a lot of people watch TV and stuff, and they see all these operators getting ready for a deployment, so they're packing their weapons, their sub guns, their sniper systems, etc. They get on a plane, and then now they're in Europe. Well, that is so far from the truth. You can't even get my body armor, my Kevlar, on the aircraft without going to Department of uh, Homeland Security or Customs. So when we get in country, we have to improvise. And most of the time, it's all the, with all the garbage that's left over in the third world countries. A broken AK-47, a Makarov, or whatever. So that's my area of operations. But today, we're talking about bringing the area of operations to the school system. And in the school system, and in our community... The, the attackers are always looking for a large crowd, whether it's a bunch of people huddled together looking for safety, 
or if they're in the, the hallway where you can be mass casualty situation. Nowhere to run. Nowhere to run. Everybody's in channeled down that hallway. Fatal funnel, yes sir. You don't have to take aim. All you have to do is spray and pray. Then you got the uh, dining Hell, facility. You don't have to pray, man. Just have to spray. You got gymnasiums for uh, stadiums, big uh, e events like that, like uh, in the football stadium just recently. Some guy goes out on the on the football field and he starts shooting into the crowd. That was about three months ago. Then you've got the classroom, and we're going to talk a little bit more about the classroom and how to improvise some of the the defensive tools that we have in that classroom. Trey, I want you in on, this, on, on some comments, okay? Oh, Trey, Trey brought up some really good points earlier tonight about how the schools are already putting Vol things in place. Come in when, when yeah. It's good. And thank you, Trey. You're awesome. You believe in it. Uh, some of the other things I've got written down is just um, like uh, we've already talked about Jackie Chan, but th there are three type weapon systems that I would like to touch on about what is available? And my first line of defense is distractive measures, distractive tools that will help buy us time to put our plan together or, or get to a safe area. Maybe get to a, another tool that we can use for a defensive weapon or an offensive weapon. And some of those tools, and I love this and I've used it, fire extinguishers. If you've got a fire extinguisher, you can spray, you can fog up a whole classroom disorienting your attacker, hiding the rest of the crowd, which gives you time to empty that fire extinguisher and then swing it around and bust him in the head with it. Clint Smith, the, the guy who runs Thunder Ranch, he goes, I love this line, he goes, fire extinguisher, spray him with the white stuff and then hit him with the red thing. <laughs> exactly. There you go. And I want to make a comment about what you said about distractions. When I was closing up the shop last night, um, our good friend Mike, Mike yes. R, I don't know if he wants me to say his name, so I won't. But Code name Raven. Okay, there you go. Yeah, there you go. We're at the shop and we're talking and we're discussing distractive measures. And Mike's really good at this. He'll, he'll demonstrate, he was demonstrating with his hat. You throw that hat as your hand's reaching for your weapon and you are going to dodge the hat. And it gives you just enough of a distraction on an individual. The weapon comes out and you got it, man. You actually showed me a little a sharp clip to put on the back of your hat. That's right. Yeah, and there was a guy in Mali who appreciates that now. He's got a little <laughs> scar right down the cheek of his face, but that's another story. Okay. But it works. A hat is an excellent distraction. A t-shirt thrown in the face. A cup of hot coffee. Anything. Sefco coffee from Hilltop. <laughs> it's the best. <laughs> it's the best. So other uh, distracting Keys things. Are going too. Basketballs, if you're in the gymnasium. You got basketballs. Throw it. Just start throwing at him. Misdirect the guy. So he's, he's trying to dodge. And while he's dodging, you can close the distance with him and go for the throat. Or else you can just back away and get out the escape. And once again, this is after running and hiding do not take effect or are not applicable. You got to call us, take it. Yeah, uh, avoidance is always uh, avoidance at all costs. If you can't hide, go ahead. Okay. Um, this is Aaron's High Cap Adventure Radio program. You're on the air. Who am I talking to? Uh, this is Carol Pepper. How you doing, buddy? What can I do for you? Hey, I was just trying to figure out how to send a request to uh, Rogers, the Flipper Band. Email KML at KML.com. <laughs> just email it at KML at KML.com. That's what I like about this show. It's not known enough. <laughs> you shouldn't call during. Don't call during my show. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. I think it was pretty cool. I mean, he loves this radio show. <laughs> he loves pertinent it. information based on the show. Go ahead. It's the best radio channel out there, I think. Huh? But, um, yeah, food trays, if you're in the mess hall, backpacks. You, you can take off a backpack and swing it at the guy. Speaking of backpacks, I want to make a comment. You can also use that for a defensive what, tool. Not only that, uh, uh, protection. Yes. Let's say uh, an improvised weapon. you got a backpack, throw some thick covered books in there, thick, thick books. And if you have to run out, God forbid, somebody's shooting at you, maybe it'll catch the book and not you. If you are financially blessed, buy yourself some soft armor plates that you can put in your backpacks for your kids that can stop rifle rounds and all that. It's just possibly something that can be one extra step. Nobody knows it's there. It doesn't do anybody any harm. But God forbid if it happens, they can cover up on the protective vitals and maybe get out of the situation. Speaking of that, I, you just reminded me, I've got a couple extra of those that I've had since Afghanistan. Really? Yeah. We'll, we'll discuss. Yeah. We'll talk, we'll talk about, about that. <laughs> um, yeah, all, all these things make the attacker duck or lose his focus. And that's what you really want. That'll buy you time to close with or get your distance with the attacker. So distractions are excellent. And again, avoid the situation at all costs if you can. But if you can't, if you're cornered, then you've got to flip that dime and, and you just need to attack. 
Okay. Give him 110%. I think we got that down. Run, hide, distract. But I think a lot of people, because they haven't thought about it, may not have, they're very creative, but they haven't had the creative thought of scissors, I cut clothes, I cut paper, I cut tape. Oh, I can use it as an implement of destruction on somebody's neck. <laughs> I know? remember my school teacher always saying, don't run with sharp, pointy objects. Now look at this one. This one actually has to. this one actually still has a point on it. It must be old. <laughs> okay. But you grab this sucker, you can actually take it apart and have two, okay? But push him aside and it's in his throat. You got a weapon here. This is a vital weapon. So if somebody's coming up to you, you can use a pair of scissors that don't have the round end on it, like a surgical pair of scissors, and do some damage. What else can we do? Folks, did you hear about how passionate he just got? That was excellent. But destructive, um, destructive tools that we have. Scissors, obviously. Baseball bats. Broken glass. Everybody, they don't pay attention to broken glass. You, you break a shard of glass off, you wrap the end of it with a piece of fabric, a t-shirt or whatever, and then you've got an awesome cutting weapon. Of course, we don't want you to get caught in the process, but if it's already happened, you got glass laying around, go for it. Have what a about, good day. What about a belt with a nice buckle on it? I've got this belt on here that will knock you out. That's right, and it, it will distract. You can use the belt for a choking device or a, a restrictive device. You wrap it around the hands. You could tie the guy up with it, whatever, after, you, after you've eliminated the threat. That's right. And uh, a mindset, a mindset, having the right attitude. you got all these parents out there who want to do the best for their kids because they love their kids. What about putting a survivalist attitude in those kids? Not a survivalist that you're going to go stock up for a five-year supply of Pinto beans. You just want to make it through the class day, right? Exactly. Yeah, eight hours. You're <laughs> Take care of your people. Take care of your friends. Take care of your children. And you, you can't do that by just saying, oh, it'll never happen to you. Don't worry about it. Or, oh, that's just so harsh. No, no, you can't, you can't grow up like that. It's a reality check, people. You got to teach your kids how to survive. I it's wanna, a rough world. I want to read something to you. In my um, opinion piece, I stated how it's going to happen. Sooner or later, it's going to happen. It's just going to, okay? To what degree, I don't know. But I read this in the um, Telegram, and this is on Thursday's paper, August 9th, and the headline reads, Prosecutor, Kids Trained to Shoot. Uh, this was in New Mexico. A father arrested at Ramshackle, New Mexico compound where 11 children were found living in filth was training youngsters to commit school shootings. Prosecutor said in court documents, blah, blah, blah. Um... That's all I really got to read on that. You've got, oh. you got sickos out there getting people trained to do dirty deeds. And then you've got people who want dirty deeds done that are of sound mind, but they're just of evil sound mind, plotting against our students to make some type of agenda come true. But then you got the sickos like this guy. So they're out there. They are out there. You better get your mindset, like Mark is saying, prepared. Trey, tell me what you got. You know, if uh, you're willing to teach your kids how to play baseball so they can beat the other team at baseball, why are you not willing to train your kids to survive in a situation? Because it's scary. It's not politically correct. You might Life offend someone. Scary. But they're children. Politically correct. They're children, man. Well, I want them to grow up to be adults, but so I, mine I are going to be. But it's harsh. I, I, don't, want, I don't want them to, to grow up like that. Well, they ain't going to grow up if they're dead. You know, there, there, there's two, two sides to that story. And, and i got to reflect back to uh, the Hindu Kush mountains in Afghanistan. I know we're running out of no, time. We're good, we're good. My, my team's up in the very northern region of Hindu Kush mountains, and we're right on the border of Pakistan. And there is a madrasa up there. It's a school for Islamic children. Well, Al-Qaeda, no, it was uh, the Taliban and the Hikmatir Gobadin group. Uh, they were both fighting over this area, but the madrasa was sponsored by Saudi Arabia. Long story short... Gotta love those Saudis, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, long story short, it was a cover that they would take and train all these young people in all these weapon uh, skills, much like what happened in New Mexico over there. The imams that were running it were hardline Taliban, weapons instructors, teaching small unit tactics and everything to these kids and teaching them how to be suicidal uh, bomb carriers. The uh, kids that were a little goofy and weren't really cutting it, they went across to Pakistan and had uh, bombs actually implanted in their abdominal cavities and then sent back across the border before they were getting infected and, and sick. They would go to uh, special forces aid stations or medical facilities with uh, non-governmental organizations and self-detonating. It happened to us in Asadabad. A lot of people can't imagine that's going on. Who would ever do that to children? 
Well, it's already here in America, folks. It's all over Michigan. It's, it's here in Texas. You got to pay attention. Everybody needs to pay attention to what's going on with their kids. And listen to the kids because they might tip on a story. Now, that was a madrasa and the guy was training his little, little children out there how to be bad people. A lot of Americans are also teaching their kids how to be responsible weapons owners and go out to the range and, and be good Americans. They're not teaching them to go out and kill people. They're teaching them how to use those weapons in a defensive posture. So, you know, look at both sides of the story. You got the good, the bad. Yeah. I, I think it's better to follow a code yeah, I, of honor. I want to make a comment about something. I, I did a class not too long ago, and I made a comment to one of my students. You're thinking too safely. Oh, you're, right. you're, you're thinking too much safely. And that individual started laughing. I can't believe my instructor just told me to bypass safety. I by no means said bypass safety. I said you're thinking too much safety because the individual had a mindset of shooting a piece of paper, standing still with no threat upon them, trying to get the same hole, shooting a bullet through the same hole every time. That is not the way it works. So when you are in a self-defense mode, using the safety factors that you would use doing marksmanship is totally different when it comes to self-defense. There are certain things you do for safety, obviously, but if you're fanatical about your safety, you have already stepped behind the curve and you're, you're just, you're wasting time. There's valuable time that you have to save and there are certain safety factors that might not be good for the situation. Can, can I know you know we're running out of short. We're good, don't worry about it. Okay, I'm thinking there are four key weapons that we haven't talked about. And parents, you need to instill this in your children. They are leadership, teamwork, communications, and a commitment to follow through. And my last few words is two to the chest, one to the head. <laughs> okay. All right. Very good. Mark, I'm, Trey, let me stay on the air here. I want to go over a few other things. Mark, it's always fantastic to have you on. Ladies Thanks and gentlemen, just, just prep your kids. I mean, it's going to happen. It's going to happen somewhere. It may even happen in our backyards. Don't freak out. Just accomplish the mission. The mission is... Do the best you can and get out of it the best way possible. And God forbid something happens, we're going to fix it. But until then, just do the best you can. Now, I want to reiterate to all my sponsors, I can't thank you enough for sponsoring the program. We have slots available for new sponsors. If you like this show, uh, spread the word. Tell people who have businesses that it might be a great opportunity to sponsor some segments on the show. It's a circle of life. You sponsor the show, we put on a good show. People listen, they go back to you. Um, and everybody wins. I can't do it without you. And the listeners, you can participate by liking us on Facebook, subscribing to the YouTube channel, following us on Instagram, calling up the station for pertinent questions <laughs> regarding the show. Not, well, never mind. Just regarding the show and its content, okay? That helps out a lot. Or coming to the functions that we may put on or coming to the shop. All these different things are things you can do and spreading the word can help sponsor the program and keep it on the air. Um, the next class, my next license to carry class, I believe, if I don't forget this, is going to be August or September 8th, I think, which is Saturday, 2 o'clock. I'll be having it posted on my website soon and you can check that out. Also, if you have five or more people and you want to do a special seminar for advanced training, you can sign up or give me a call and we'll get you squared away in that respect. Um, also, next Friday is ladies' night. And Trey, what is it? If you identify as female. You may shoot for free. Range time is free, okay? So you don't have to put on a skirt. This isn't San Francisco, is it? <laughs> I thought this was Texas. Hey, man. All right, never mind. Two of the biggest states, maybe they're connected. I, I, I don't know. Whatever. I don't care. If you if you identify as a female, you can shoot for free on ladies' night. It's the third Friday of the night. First Friday is two for night. Bring a friend. The friend gets to shoot for free. And second Fridays of the month is round robin competition. You'll learn a lot. Definitely subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow us on Instagram. Um, like us on Facebook. Come to the shop Friday nights. Do some shooting. Uh, shooting the bull and shooting some rounds, and you'll have a lot of fun, okay? Mark, you got anything else? Just be a good person. <laughs> Mrs. Uh, Master Cindy Key out of uh, Rockdale, Martial Arts Academy in Rockdale, she wasn't able to be with us today. I'm going to have to preempt her. And I'll tell you what, Trey, we're kind of ahead of the curve here. 
let's find me some great music. I'll tell you what, let's go back to the opener for Mark, and we'll just play that out. Until next week, ladies and gentlemen, keep your powder dry, and God bless. <laughs>